Hello, today we're in eastern Oklahoma City at our bioretention and rain garden demonstration project where we're looking at removal of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment from the runoff that runs into the Hog Creek watershed. The Hog Creek watershed drains into Lake Thunderbird, which is a drinking water source for Norman, Dell City, and Midwest City. So the quality of the water that comes out of this drainage is of very high importance. Because of that, we got an EPA 319 grant and we've retrofitted a neighborhood here in Deerfield, Deerfield Estates with some rain gardens and bioretention cells. Uh, rain gardens and bioretention cells are generally considered about the same thing, but a lot of times the difference is a difference of scale. So we're gonna start out here with something that I would probably call a rain garden, which is more, as a, more of a residential scale and build into something that's a larger scale that would be more generally be called a bioretention cell. So here is our most upstream or in the headwaters of this drainage uh, rain garden, which is kind of in a, in a uh, gently sloping drainage here. And we have a number of different plant types. We have some fountain grass, we have knockout roses, some liriope, monkey grass, and finally some crepe myrtles. And we've designed this so that it accepts the, it, it accepts the water from upstream. It gently ponds it about four to six inches and then it overflows. But while it's ponded, it's able to infiltrate into the groundwater. And an important thing to note is that we have hardwood mulch in here. The hardwood mulch is, is denser. It's not gonna float off like the rest of our lighter mulch would that you would typically use in your landscape. So here is the second of our rain gardens. This is actually in the same neighborhood as the first one. A little bit smaller, where we're using some of the same types of plants. We're using our crepe myrtles, our knockout roses, and then this one we have some daylilies in, along with our hardwood mulch. And it's finished off with some brick that was left over from when they built their house over here. So we were able to really tie this into the house and also tie it into our other rain garden that is just a little bit further upstream. So now we're at a rain garden about halfway down our drainage way into the neighborhood and this is a little bit larger bowl, it's a little bit deeper. This is really sandy soil so we're able to get some more ponding in there and it can still drain within the 24 hours that we want so that we don't create mosquito habitat. Here once again we have our fountain grass, we have some of these bunch grasses, we have black-eyed Susan pampas grass, and once again, our knockout roses. And you will notice that we have different types of plants at different layers within our bowl. That's because this is gonna stay wet for a longer period of time. Those plants are gonna have wet feet. And then as you go up the bowl, they're gonna be drier for longer periods of time. So we got our black-eyed Susan, some of our pampas grass up there that are able to um, survive with a little bit less water and um, don't have to worry about having their feet wet for so long. We, on this one, we also have a dry creek bed that comes down here through these trees. This particular homeowner was having some erosion issues, so we put some large rock in there. Um, and then as the water comes down, then it comes and it, it fills up into this bowl. One thing that we do need to keep an eye on, and one thing that we actually had to work with this year, is that there may be sediment sources that arise upstream of your rain garden that you weren't aware of or, or weren't existing when you put your rain garden in. So this happened in he at this neighborhood where the neighbor put their garden in uh, this year after we had constructed it last year. So we'll go up here and we'll look at some of the things that we did to kind of keep that sediment out of our rain garden. So up here at the upstream end of our dry creek bed where we had some sediment issues coming in, especially this spring when we had really high flows and all the rainfall, we used a couple different um, BMPs to kind of keep our sediment out. And basically we're trying to slow it down, filter it out and give it a chance to settle. So the two things that we did, we used this, this is a, a, a wattle. It's basically something that's used for a construction site and it slows the water down, ponds it out ponds it up and gives that sediment a chance to settle out. And then along with that, we brought some sod in here because before it was just some of the natural grasses here in his backyard. So this sod really protects that soil. Vegetation can be your best defense against erosion. So with those two things working together, we were really able to slow down the sediment to stop it. it might require a little bit of clean out, but hopefully next year we won't get uh, record breaking rains again and we won't have to have that issue. But that's something that you need to keep an eye on. So now we're at the bottom of the drainage in a large scale bioretention cell that is collecting much of the water from the entire neighborhood, the entire drainage that's coming down to this point. This is about an 8,000 square foot bioretention cell that is located just outside of the 100 year floodplain and it has about six inches of sand media underneath it with a 
under drain system. We want to have this drain, but because it is lower down in the watershed, the water table is a little bit higher. So we have an under drain system in there so that once again, we can drain this in 24 to 48 hours. In, in this one, we kind of designed this to be built like an inverted golf green because this particular homeowner likes to shoot his golf balls down into this area and we kind of got creative and decided that we would try to make this look like an inverted golf green. So we have TIF from Unigrass in the bottom of our bioretention cell that's built into our sand. The TIF is, is going really well. It's withstanding some of the ponding that we have going on even in the really higher rains that we had this spring when there was even flooding in this area so that caused the water to be on there for longer than a week, it still stood up very, very well. In addition to this, we have our cypress plants. We have a, a sand trap over here on the side, and then we have some cottonless cottonwoods that we put up kind of just to frame our entire system. But once again, this is about 8,000 square feet, so this can handle a good chunk of the water that's coming off of our whole neighborhood. It's kind of our last uh, last bioretention cell in there. So we have smaller scale ones that are upper part of it, middle scale ones as we go farther down, and then down here at the end to intercept everything that's coming off of our neighborhood, we have a larger scale bioretention cell that's filtering out a lot of our pollutants. So if you're interested in learning more about bioretention cells and rain gardens, check out our website at lid.okstate.edu and click on the bioretention cell link. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.